So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Kerry Bolton, who is a professional EOS implementer, a certified exit planner and a certified value builder. She's also the author of two books. Her first one was The Uncensored Truth About Exit Strategy and the second one is A Million Dollar Payday and both I think have been on the bestseller list. Welcome, Kerry. Thank you, Deborah. Ah, Delighted to be here. It's really good. I know that um, you and I obviously talk quite a lot through the EOS network, but I'm really keen to hear more um, about some of the things that you do and some of the clients that you've worked with and just get a sense of, you know, what, why people would exit plan and what that looks like. Sure thing. Yeah. So the first thing I'd like to do is just ask you for a professional and personal best, just so our listeners can get to know the Kerry Bolton. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me start with personal best. And and I'm really proud of this, actually. I uh, made a wonderful lemon mousse. (laughs) (laughs) And um, frankly, I don't do a lot of cooking these days. But, um, you know, once when you've been cooking for 50 years, sometimes you've had enough of it. So um, but I have a friend's birthday coming up and I did a trial on it and uh, it was absolutely delicious. So I've mastered the Danish Christmas lemon mousse. Wow, sounds yeah. good. Oh, oh, to die for. <laughs> so I'm very happy with that. Um, uh, and I think also that um, uh, just seeing out the last last Saturday of uh, Cricket Blast with my 150 kids that I muster every Saturday morning, um, I think that's a personal best as well, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> Anyway, something I love doing, but um, yeah, and uh, professionally, I think that, um, you know, the, the um, this year gone by, I'm going to sort of probably put it in that context, I think professionally has, as we all know, has been quite challenging with mm-hmm. the um, pandemic that's been going on, but I think that uh, throughout, uh, we've been, uh, and I've certainly put you in this category as well, you know, we've um, professionally been able to help a lot of business owners and really and pivot you know the the work that we've been doing to online mm-hmm. when necessary uh, and really help them get going on you know and keep their businesses solid throughout the the whole period and and put them on a good footing you know going forward no matter what global conditions we might be in so yeah I think I think that's something to reflect on, which is really positive. Yeah, Yeah, completely agree. I mean, it has Mm. been a challenging year, but you're right. It gives me such joy to kind of work with those people and and help them through that, as I know it does you too. Yeah. Yeah. So, Gary, you've been obviously a professional EOS implementer for a while. We both work with those sort of clients, but you've also got this the, the two certifications in, in both the um, exit strategy and the value building. Tell me a little bit about that and what, what do you mean by an exit strategy? Yes, you know, I'm, I'm just going to reflect back to when um, I bought my first business, which was um, back in 1987. So that's how long ago. Yeah. And I happened to be a general manager of the business. It was a division of a, a large public company. And um, at the time, they were looking ahead strategically, deciding that, that they didn't really want to be in that particular industry. In fact, a number of industries, they wanted to change direction completely and move into the health industry because they looked ahead and could see demographically where things were going. That has all played out, of course. Yeah. So um, this was a business involved in international freight forwarding. And um, we saw the, um, I saw the opportunity to be able to do some really good things with that particular business, having worked in the business for quite some time. And corporates always think about succession planning, but very few private businesses think about succession planning. Sometimes family businesses do, but mostly private business owners don't think about it. And you might coin that as exit. But I first learned about the thing called exit strategy, when um, I had to put together a business plan to get investors to help me buy that business. I went to a very dear friend and mentor and he said, Kerry, you write the plan, you can convince me, I'll help you get the money together. And we needed about a million dollars at the time. So, and my husband and I had nothing. So <laughs> it was only, <laughs> hey, who cares? You don't know what you don't know, do you? you no, know, that's so, right. <laughs> um, anyway, I happened to come across, I mean, I had no idea how to write that sort of a plan quite frankly anyway I saw a uh, I came across this uh, an ad in the paper for a book called how to write plans that win dollars and it was by a couple of professors out of MIT in the US 
And I sent off for the book. This is like clip the coupon, put in your credit card details, send off for the book. And it arrived and I literally wrote my plan by the book. Um, in it, they said you had to have an exit strategy. So if you're getting investors into a business, the investor needs to know how to get their money out or what the plans are to get their money out. I mean, they're not going to stay with you because you want to run this as a lifestyle business for the rest of your life. You know, they've got to know how they're going to get their money out. So, and the, our exit strategy was to grow the business and hopefully sell it off to an international group somewhere between the five and the 10 year mark. And so that was, that was the sum total of the exit strategy at that particular time. Now, as it turned out, look, highs and lows, obviously, in all of that. Um, my daughter was born the day I had to sign the contract to take over the business, my first child. So that was a nice little challenge, which you don't know what you don't know, just the same. Um, and so that, that, that the fact that we actually had that notion, highs and lows, as I said, right throughout the process of, with that business. But we did actually have someone come and, and approach us at around the six-year mark and we did the deal, sold the business. I stayed on for another couple of years. So nine years later, we're out. Now, most people don't think about who the most important investor is in their business, which of course is themselves. You know, if they're a, even if they're a 100% shareholder, mm -hmm. they are the most important investor in the business. So thinking about how somewhere down the track, you're going to move on from that business is, is really important because guess what? We are all going to exit our businesses one day yeah. simply because we are human. It's the bottom line. So <laughs> let's think about it. It doesn't really matter whether you want to consider whether you want to stay in your business for 20, 30, 40, 50 years or whether you really are focused on you know, building like we were, building a business and selling it at a point, you know, um, or for it to be transitioned to uh, someone else in the family, for instance, or management, you know, there's, there's so many different ways you can actually exit a business. But, so, but, but most people don't think about it and they often don't think about it until they're on top of it. And then they're into either a fire sale or some crisis has um, emerged, like, you know, things that we call the the dastardly D's, I call it, that's my name for it, the dastardly D's. And it's like things like, well, maybe it's declining sales. You know, there's, hey, in this uh, last couple of years that we've had with COVID, um, it's so many business owners have rethought what do they want to do? You know, in the future, do they ever, do they really want to be under the pressure that they've been under in these last couple of years? So you might have that like declining sales. You might have disagree. You might have business partners. You might have some you know disagreement going on. You could just be over it. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's the case with a lot of business owners right at this minute. That just it's been so tough. Um, you could, I mean, you know, divorce. Unfortunately, you know those that sort of happens and affects your businesses. Um, you could have an accident. You could have some sort of disability happen. Uh, yeah, you could be. <laughs> under under water you know with so much debt you could have some sort of a disaster happen and look the worst thing of all it could be that it, you know someone dies in your in your family and you know that's what's happened as well I have that personal experience you know my husband passed away um, three years ago and that was our fourth business that we've had um, we had in place fortunately we practice what i preach so <laughs> yes. we 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 had in place the right um business succession agreement the right shareholders agreement so that was a triggering event you know that um so if somebody who was the shareholder passed away then obviously we would enact what happened now um in the event um, the other, our other two shareholders uh, were having trouble managing everything and, and getting uh, getting along, and they both came to see me independently. Um, and so I ended up stepping into the business for a couple of years, just about a couple of years. But but that was never the intention, and we we already 
had enacted what was required under the business succession agreement and the shareholders agreement. So I just went in there as a consultant mm -hmm. <laughs> because of my expertise to be able to help them, you know, to get through that period. Because, um, you know, if, if that happens, if that's sort of one of the contingencies that you need to think about, you know, what happens if something like that occurs? Yep. Um, and uh, most of the time you don't want the partner or spouse necessarily stepping into the business you know you you want it to be uh, with the continue to be the professional organization that it is so um but yeah so that's so that's all around thinking about exit you know and thinking about whatever it doesn't matter about the time frame but but it's about starting to think about it now and um, have some idea around what that's actually going to be for you. And frankly, exit strategy is simply business strategy. It's nothing else. It's, it's nothing more than the implementation of really good business practices, such as EOS, you yes. Know? Yes. Um, and focusing on enterprise value. And it, it, that'll actually drive a much better outcome, um, including a better lifestyle, and uh, you know, then for everybody, and it will simply drive your wealth. And you know, it's really important to consider what stage of um, growth cycle that you're in mm -hmm. as well. Um, because I think with most of our EOS clients, where they're often in the growth phase, yeah. and you know they're sort of at the scale and, and systemized phase, or even slightly be beyond that. But um, even it's so important to understand that um, when you're in that phase, you're really optimizing uh, the best time to consider the succession, you know, succession, or if it's a sale, what that next phase of your, of your, um, your life will be. And then, it, because if you ride the business over the top in terms of its growth trajectory, nothing's, you know, you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to go for another couple of years. Then, you know, you, you're just sort of waiting for too long. You've, you've gone over the top of the growth curve mm -hmm. and you're not really, um, you're not really ready. Um, as I said before, you know, you never know what might happen. But um, if you can, if you can really just give it some further thought and uh, understand how you are um, looking at those sorts of contingencies, then it, and if you end up with sort of being low on energy, and uh, you lose the passion for your business and the motivation and you just want out, then that's not going to give you the most successful outcome in terms of reaching the, uh, you know, the the wealth less levels necessarily that you're looking for as well. So in that respect, then, so it's almost like you you should always be planning for the exit right from the beginning, yeah. and knowing what you want out of the business and when you want that exit to happen, so you can actually maximize the value at a time when you're still engaged, when you're still, uh, yeah. Yeah, when you're ready, when yeah. you're absolutely ready. So, I mean, two two things to think about that, that yes, um, your business uh, and make sure you should always be running your business so that it's ready to sell yeah. at any stage. It doesn't matter because you never know when someone's going to come along. Um, some of uh, some of our listeners might remember a, a guy by the name of Kerry Packer, who is certainly famous here in Australia. Yep. Um, and have you heard of him, Deb? Yeah, I have. Well, I've lived in Australia for ten years. So yes, I'm okay. Not. So you will. <laughs> so he he's obviously uh, well the Packer family um, media moguls. Basically, they have been. However, at the time uh, it was back in the eighties, and um, here the. Kerry Packer owned Channel 9 in the Nine Network around Australia. And Alan Bond, who is also another entrepreneur, Australian entrepreneur, a bit of a uh, raconteur, I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, won the America's Cup in 1983 for Australia, so we were happy about that. Yeah. But um, uh, large as life and quite a character as well. Well, he came along and he offered Kerry Packer a billion dollars for the Channel 9 Network. And um, Kerry Packer's famously saying that you only ever get one Alan Bond in your lifetime, and I've had mine. And so, of course, he sold the network. Yep. Mind yep. you, he did buy it back three years later when it, you know, for about a quarter of the price yeah. because, yeah. because um, the Alan Bond's team couldn't run it. But, yeah. hey, that's another story. But what I want to relate that to is that 
always having your business ready to sell means that you are ready for that Alan Bond if he ever if that Alan Bond ever comes along in your lifetime. And you know what? I have to say, we had that experience as well. We were so lucky. We, you know, what's that Oprah saying? You know, luck comes to being prepared. Or so I think you, I've seen a, a great quote in something that you've written, Deb, as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it happened for us in 2007, which was with our um, third business, in fact, and uh, the which was in real estate and uh, somebody wanted to buy our shares. They wanted that business. And I can tell you right now, we were, we, we had not even contemplated selling the business at all, yep. but they came along, they made us an offer too good to refuse. And we said, yes, thank you. We'll have that. And we're out of here. And it was really fortunate. I mean, that was uh, my husband actually stayed on as a as a list and sell sales agent because he wanted to. It wasn't conditional, as it turned out. That was not conditional yeah. in terms of the sale. Um, but it uh, and for him that was that was great because he loved doing that. Mm -hmm. But he then got sick a year after a couple of years. He then actually got sick with. Uh, bowel cancer and he resigned and left so he did get well again and and then we started again in 2011 so you know those things can happen so you've got to have something else to move on to yeah, but yeah. Uh, as I said before unfortunately it got him six years later and um, he passed away but you know the the thing is that you never know when these opportunities will come along and so always having your business ready regardless is going to to allow you to take advantage of that opportunity if it happens yep. and it's also going to mean that you produce it you're actually running your business for, to to have it as valuable as it can possibly be that's really Which is better for you at the same time it is absolutely better for you at the same time because you'll have much better income and you'll be creating a basis for your future wealth because sadly, I, you know, there are uh, some research has been done by um, the Commonwealth Bank actually a few years ago now, and I don't think the numbers really will, will have changed, but <clears throat> of the uh, business owners that they surveyed, 90% um, 90, 90 of the business owners' wealth was tied up in their businesses. So when you consider, and this again was a research study done um, I think it was, yes, it was Deloitte's, um, that 80% of the businesses that go on the market, of 80%, only 20% of the businesses sell that go on the market. So if you've got 90% of your wealth tied up in your business and you might have, and you happen to be selling it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 so what I'm really doing is just saying to people, think about it. Think about what your strategy is. Doesn't matter whether it's in three years or thirty-three years from now. Yeah. Just think about how is how it is that you might want to exit your business one day, and the business is one thing. Look, at, you know, it can be family succession. You you might sell it. It could be management buy it. Oh, gosh, there are there are many different ways to actually exit your business. But I also want you to think about people to think about then, if you happen to be a bit closer to that, what are you going to do personally? Mm -hmm. So, and often when I give talks, I say to people that um, I'm now in what I call my six, three invention. So I have retired three times. The first time was only for two weeks. <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> I couldn't cope. Yeah. <laughs> that was in 1996. <laughs> so oh, I can't cope with this anyway. And no, uh, I took myself off to university because I'd never been uh, to uni, and, you know, started working when I was 15. So yeah. unfortunately, my sister and I, we actually lost our parents at a very young age as well. So um, we were out in the workforce, you know, um, probably sooner than most but uh, anyway so I took myself off to university and did a master's degree in entrepreneurship and innovation and uh, at the same time started another business in business coaching and we bought into our first real estate business so we were busy parent and we had two children so we were we're, vis we're busy people you yes. know and then um, um, you know I love doing what I was doing with business coaching and did that for nine years um, and uh, we had about 120 clients at the time and um, but then I, I did think about it that that I think thought I maybe I need to spend a little bit of time with the kids before they completely grow up and disappear on us. But mm -hmm. um, so I became mum's taxi for a few years and we had the real estate business going great guns as well. 
and um, you know leopards don't change their spots but it's like uh, throwing yourself into all sorts of other things which if you know for me ha being a person that loves business I threw myself into our local community into the schools you know ended up president of course of the parents association and um, I am still heavily involved locally with our community because of uh, I really love it with you know the the local community is fantastic yep. even though my son has just turned 31 and my daughter's 34 um in fact they've been hooked in as well i mean they came through the local sports club and as i said i still run the the cricket blast program on saturday mornings um, so we've been involved for 26 years and i've been 16 years secretary of the club but you know so so this is these are things that are creating purpose and and so for people who are nearer their exit it's yep. really important to think about what it is what else you want to do I mean I was in Rotary as well for 21 years so, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing it but at the end of the day something had to give I was trying to do too much <laughs> I still try to do too much but yeah hey that's who you are that's, aren't you? You are. that's right yeah absolutely yeah. okay so, so let's just imagine that you know one of the listeners is is running a successful kind of established business and they're thinking about okay I hadn't really thought about exiting but I probably should do where would they first start what would they do the first thing that you'd really want to do would be to sit down and and um give some thoughts you know so to maybe these sort of five questions really yep. at, at the high level more than anything. How much longer do you want to be actively involved in your business? Um, and I mean, if it's vague and you say, oh, well, at least another five years, well, um, dig it a little bit deeper than that. Go, you know, think about it um, because um, it makes it easier for you to be able to look, at, look back at what you want to accomplish before you actually walk away, you yeah. know, and, um, it's also important because it might it, it actually triggers the um, the other actions that you want to you might want to take strategically you know for your business. So mm -hmm. um, they ta exits take a a long time. If you think that you can um, just have it all happen and um, execute in sixty days, then think again because that's not it takes a long time. It does. Um, so. <sighs> It's around thinking strategically about where where you want your business to go, which of course dovetails beautifully into what we do with EOS. You know, yes. which is um, really important. So maximizing the value of your business is number one. Thinking about which, of course, is dovetails into that question: How much longer do you really want to be in your business, mm -hmm. um, actively involved in your business? Number two: Who's likely to be your successor? Um, have you thought about it? Have you thought about is it I mean, do you have children that might want to be involved in the business? Is there family? Um, you could be in a situation, we have grown up children now, and um, yes, they're going to be involved, but there's one that will be appropriate, one that won't be, you know, or, or, or not, you know, or it might be not who you think, you know. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, is it, think about who your successor might be. If it, maybe it's children. Could it be management? Um, Will you sell your business? I mean, look at, so for me, like with the business that I was in early in the freight forwarding business, um, as part of Main Nicholas, then um, they tr they wanted to sell it to an international group and they couldn't do it. But I said I was interested and they finally came back to me. So we did a management buyout. So, you know, management could be one way of doing it. Um, or as I said, would you look for a buyer that can actually take it to new heights at the, you know um, and make it far more valuable so um, maybe it could be one of your customers mm. or maybe it could be a supplier or maybe it's a competitor I mean there's so many different options that you need to think about but and it, but it just depends on you so it depends on your goals and um, you know what sort of industry you're in what your company culture is as well so the third thing I'd like you to think about as well would be what do you need when you transition out of the business in terms of the transaction um, so that you've got financial independence and that, you know, you have uh, what you need for what if you're going on to a new new venture or adventure um, mm -hmm. or are you going to retire? You know, what's the number that you actually need? And um, it's, it's a freedom number. So, uh, you know, the... 
there are impacts on that, of course, what you're going to pay in terms of taxation. Do you have the right structure? I've worked with business owners who've said, yes, they've got the right structure, but then we, when we've dug into it, they don't have the right structure and they're going to be up for far more tax than they anticipated. So it's really important to make sure that you have a look at your legal structure and you, your potential potential future taxation liabilities if you, you, know, you do sell the business. Um, thinking about um, what you're going to do next, as I've talked about already, do you have a hobby? Um, do you have a project? Do you have a new venture? Do you want to go build a house somewhere? Do you want to travel? Um, are, you, are you going to go back to school like I did? You know, <laughs> And I've got to tell you, I ended up teaching at the university for three years as well after I finished the degree. Wow. They got me back because they said I was on the wrong side of the desk all the time. So um, so whatever those, those things are that you think you might want to do, they will actually affect the, the transaction. Yeah. And I often, I also often tell the story about my uncle, who was uh, a, an incredibly successful businessman. Started from zero, you know, uh, as an electrician, working out of his parents' backyard, and um, he uh, was in uh, electrical contracting and consulting and engineering. And he grew a business at its height. He had fourteen different companies, five hundred staff. He was all over Australia. And uh, remember sitting down with him um, after a, we'd sold the freight business, and he said to me, "Kerry, I wish I've done I'd done what you've just done ten years ago." Yeah. It ultimately took him another ten years to actually get out of all the businesses, and he was he was really excited. Um, fantastic I'll be able to play golf three days a week I can catch up with my mates we can have coffees we can do lunches etc 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 and um, which was great but it doesn't last you know it lasted about a year unfortunately 12 months later he was in clinical depression because he hadn't I think you do. well he hadn't thought about his his identity yeah. and most it, his identity was his business so when, when you're on the, the golf course, you are not the owner of that business any longer. Mm -hmm. You know, you are sort of, you don't want someone coming up to you and sort of saying, well, who are you when you used to be somebody? Mm -hmm. Now so, you're not, you yeah. know. So it's very, very important. And particularly for men, because unfortunately men seem to be less um, inclined to think about what else, what else it is that they're going to be. And they, they, to acknowledge that your identity is really tied up in who you are in your business is really important. Mm. And then to look for how you're going to recreate that identity and what else it is that you're going to do. You might have a, you know, a great loving partnership at home, etc. cetera, um, but, you know, it could be I married you for better or worse, but not for lunch, you know. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. women, women have create are, are better at creating um, lives that are not totally dependent on the one identity. So mm. think about that. Think about your plans for your next step and what yeah. that's going to be. And run your numbers. Run your numbers and understand what it is that you're going to be need in the in your back pocket. And um, most people think about the maximum they think that their, their business is worth. So that this leads me on to the next point, which is, do you know what your business is really worth yeah. on the open market? Mm -hmm. you know, regardless of whether or not you're going to sell it, just think, do you know what your business is worth? So I highly advocate getting an independent valuation. Um, it doesn't have to be something that you pay thousands and thousands of dollars for. Um, in fact, um, as a certified value builder, one of the things I can do is give people the opportunity to do that questionnaire online. Doesn't it's nothing, um, but it'll benchmark you. It doesn't cost you a penny. It's going to benchmark your business against other businesses in in your same industry. You can pop your numbers in there. It's uh, completely confidential, and it will give you a benchmark valuation, so you have some idea. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to understand and know what your business is worth. And as I said also earlier, think about your um, what what should you be doing now to minimise your future tax liabilities because you will pay tax on the any sort of transfer of your business, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, and then you need to consider the implications of that going forward um, 
as to you know what you need for the rest of your life yeah makes perfect sense hey look you've already given us five really great questions that people can actually ask themselves but in terms of top three tips what would you say to people who are considering what their exit strategy looks like uh well i think really first thing is give some thought as to who how you're going to get out of the business yeah <laughs> Um, and if shutting the business down is, that's an option. You can always liquidate. I mean, it depends on the type of business that you have. Yeah. That is always an option. Um, yeah, so think about what it is that, how you're going to actually leave the business. Uh, uh, you know, what sort of exit strategy are you going to uh, engage in? And would your book help with that? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've um, There's a... A number of free uh, resources that I refer to in the Million Dollar Payday book, especially yep. um, the the Uncensored Truth it, book is really about um, more of a it, it's thought provoking yep. um, yep. because like a um, you know you've heard the expression that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it actually takes a village to to exit your business because <laughs> you need you need um, people around you who have expertise in all the right areas. So you know the tax. Um, uh, lawyer, the um, financial planner, probably the, um, you need the uh, accountant, your accountant who's going to fix up your, your books, maybe an estate planner as well. Uh, it's really important. So, um, and, and if you've got somebody who's standing in your shoes for you, which is the sort of role that I I play. I, I'm I'm not a business broker, and I'm not an M and A expert. I happen to have had a lot of personal experience, which helps, you know, in the, in that regard. And that's 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 why I'm on this mission, you know, as and um, to help educate business owners to understand that it's really it's so important to think about these things, mm. to be in control, and to to be able to plan an exit so you can have it on your terms and uh, in in the time frame that you want to have. I guess th that's really the the nub of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So if someone thought about how you're going to get out of the business, definitely have a look at your books and the resources in there and ask those five questions and that should get yes. you some way towards, yeah, getting an exit strategy in place. Perfect. Now, Kerry, I know that you're based in Melbourne, but you actually work with people all over the world, don't you? I do, as a matter of fact, yeah, I do. Um, I, I work with uh, some clients I've worked with in North America as well as the UK. Yep. Um, and actually I haven't worked that with anybody in New Zealand directly at this stage, but it doesn't, look, it doesn't matter, you know, the principles are the same, but I've certainly worked with businesses all over Australia in every single state. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's just... Giving yourself enough time is the answer to it, all of those questions that yeah, we talked about. Before. Don't be in a hurry because that's when it costs you. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, if anybody wants to get hold of you, how would they find you? So there's, um, you could go to my website, which is theexitstrategygroup.com.au. Yep. You'll find me on LinkedIn where I'm at, uh, I'm Kerry Bolton, Kerry with a Y, yes. Bolton with a U, B-O-U-L-T-O-N, and I've even got Holdsworth in LinkedIn because that's uh, my married name. Yeah. Uh, so you can find me on LinkedIn as well. You can just reach out and connect there. And, um, yeah, the all the resources that I've talked about are available through my website as well. So That's fantastic. Yeah. And, of course, you're also on the EOS Worldwide website as well. Oh, I am, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, I... I I learned about EOS. I think I've told you the story before. I learned about EOS when I was over at the Exit Planning Institute conference um, in the US and saw a presentation from a couple of uh, m &A private equity guys who were demonstrating how they evaluated businesses based on the six key components in EOS. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And that's how I learned about it. So I came back and did my own due diligence, you know, yeah. back then and um, discovered, get it, discovered it from yeah. my perspective because it wasn't really top of mind anywhere here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I thought, wow, this is fantastic because business readiness, business attractiveness, personal readiness and financial readiness. Yeah. Business readiness 
when I do when I run through my initial assessment with people and uh, yeah, the re usually highlight, I mean, it's about 360 questions we go through. Um, it often highlights the gaps. Well, it does. It highlights the gaps. And so we work, work on closing the gaps. And EOS is dovetails perfectly into the business element. So um, yeah, it's, I just, that's why I became a professional EOS implementer as well. So yep. <laughs> it gives me a chance to be able to offer another string to my bow. Yeah. yeah. It was also why Firefly ended up as a venture Correct. capitalist investing in EOS, right? Because EOS Correct. runs on EOS. Yeah, that's so right. It definitely makes your business far more attractive, which is great. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Kerry, look, we could talk all day, I'm sure, but that has been really informative. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I will make sure we've got links to all those resources in the description for the podcast. Mm -hmm. But thank you very, very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, absolute pleasure, Deborah. Thank you.